Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to Philo Notes. And again, thank you for visiting us today for another edition of our daily whiteboard. In the previous edition of the Symbolic Logic series, titled Propositions and Symbols Used in Symbolic Logic, I discussed the two basic types of proposition as well as the symbols used in symbolic logic. I have also briefly discussed how propositions can be symbolized using a variable or a constant. And if you missed that edition, I suggest that you check it out as well, as it's very important to know first the symbols before moving on to the more complex topics in symbolic logic. Now, in today's edition, I will focus on the topic negation of statements in symbolic logic or the way in which propositions or statements in symbolic logic are negated. And to begin with, we have to note that any statement used in symbolic logic can be negated. And as I have already mentioned in the previous discussion, symbolic logic uses tilde to symbolize a negative proposition. But how do we know that a statement is negative? Well, a statement is negative if it contains at least one of the following signifiers. No, not, it is false, it is not the case, or it is not true. For example, let's consider the following statements. One, either no students are interested in the party, or it is not the case that the administration requires the students to attend the party. 2. If the company does not increase the salary of the workers, then the union will go on strike to press its various demands. And 3. The professor will not be absent if and only if he is not sick. As we can notice, example number one is a compound statement, and both component statements contain the negation signs no and it is not the case. For this reason, when we symbolize the entire statement, then both component statements should be negated. Hence, if we let P stand for no students are interested in the party, and Q for it is not the case that the administration requires the students to attend the party, then the statement, either no students are interested in the party, or it is not the case that the administration requires the students to attend the party, can be symbolized as follows. Not P or not Q. In example number two, however, only the first component statement contains the negation sign not. Hence, only the first statement should be negated. Thus, if we let P stand for the company does not increase the salary of the workers and Q for the union will go on strike to press its various demands, then the statement if the company does not increase the salary of the workers then the union will go on strike to press its various demands, is symbolized as follows. Not P, then Q. Now in example number three, both component statements contain a negation sign not. Thus, when symbolized, both component statements have to be negated. Hence, if we let P stand for the professor will not be absent, and Q for, he is not sick, then the statement, the professor will not be absent if and only if he is not sick, is symbolized as follows. Not P, if and only if, not Q. Now, sometimes a statement can be double or even triple negated. In other words, the statement contains two or more negation signs. If this happens, then the statement has to be symbolized accordingly. Consider this example. It is not true that the professor is not sick. If we let P stand for the entire statement, then it is symbolized as follows. Not, not P. 
However, since a double negation implies affirmation, then the statement can also be symbolized as follows. P. In some cases, contradictory words such as kind and unkind and mortal and immortal may signify negation if and only if it is clearly specified in the statement. Otherwise, the statement should not be negated. Consider the following examples. 1. Lulu is generous, while Lily is unkind. 2. Either George is kind, or Bert is unkind. In example number 1, the word unkind does not clearly signify negation. Thus, the statement, Lily is unkind, is not a negative statement. Let us symbolize example number 1. If we let P stand for Lulu is generous and Q for Lily is unkind, then the proposition Lulu is generous while Lily is unkind is symbolized as follows. P and Q. However, the word unkind in example number 2 clearly signifies negation because of the presence of the contradictory words kind and unkind in the statement. Now, if we let P stand for George is kind and Q for Bert is unkind, then the statement either George is kind or Bert is unkind is symbolized as follows. P or not Q. This is because the statement either George is kind or Bert is unkind can also be stated in this manner. Either George is kind or Bert is not kind. Finally, let us discuss the rule in negation. So the rule in negation is as follows. The negation of a true statement is false, while the negation of a false statement is true. Well, obviously, the rule in negation says that if a particular statement is true, then it becomes false when negated. And if a particular statement is false, then it becomes true when negated. Let me illustrate this point through a truth table. And so, if P is true, then not P is false. And if P is false, then not P is true. Let us determine the truth value of a negative statement by applying the rule in negation. Consider this example. It is not the case that the administration requires the students to attend the party. So again, if we let P stand for the statement, the administration requires the students to attend the party, then the statement is symbolized as P. However, since the statement contains a negation sign, it is not the case, then the statement is negative. Thus, the statement has to be symbolized as not P. Now, if we assume that the statement the administration requires the students to attend the party is true, that is, the administration did indeed require the students to attend the party, then the statement, it is not the case that the administration requires the students to attend the party is absolute false. Now, please note that when we assign a truth value to a statement, we assign it to the statement without the negation sign. Thus, if we have the statement not P, and if we assign, for example, true value to the statement, we assign it to P and not to not P. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me today in this edition of our daily whiteboard here at Philo Notes as we try to make the understanding of philosophy incredibly easy. Keep looking forward to our series of editions on the topic 
symbolic logic. And I hope you find this material helpful. And if you do, feel free to subscribe. Thanks. Take care.